right. <clears throat> I wanted to do a video about my LS build. I got a GMC Sierra. This is 2003. Um, I used to do landscaping out of it. So I beat it up pretty good. And some work I'm going to do to it. I'm going to replace the bumper. Uh, actually going to black out everything here. Uh, and change the wheels. Get some black. I want everything black. Take the chrome. All the chrome got to go. Um, I used to landscape out of it. Beat it up pretty good. Got a couple of dents and dings. I get it taken out. Got to get knocked out of it and get it probably painted. When I bought one of these, which I should have bought a long time ago, <clears throat> I stopped working in it. So it had uh, about 215,000 miles on it. Never really had any engine problem. I tore up my rear end a couple times, but I actually, last time I tore it up, I think I tore it up twice. Last time I tore it up, I actually upgraded to a 411 gear with the Auburn, was it, Auburn gears, locking rear end or whatever, and that keeps it. Um, they kept it from tearing up again, so that's just pretty good on that part. But uh, and here's a couple other dents I gotta get taken out. Probably can't see it's black, chrome taken out. But uh, like I said, it had 200 some thousand miles on it. And when I bought that truck, it just started sitting in my garage. But before I bought the truck, it had a small, well, I used to have to put antifreeze in it, but there was no leak on the ground so i didn't know you know what it was or was it from the water pump i didn't see any oil in the i didn't see any water in the oil so i didn't think it was a blown head gasket so i did, didn't know but after it set because i only drove it because maybe once or twice a month because honestly when we go out me and my wife rides in her car so i don't ever drive it but as it sat there when I went to start it, or when I went to go check the oil one day, it had water in the oil, and it finally showed it. So I guess it's sitting there not running so much, it made the problem worse. So when, so I just went ahead and said, hey, since I'm going to go ahead and get it fixed, just go ahead and do the whole thing. So let me go ahead and pop the hood. And you can see it's still dirty on the inside because it's still been sitting up because I'm not 100% finished. Um, but what I did, had the guy pull out the engine. Of course, uh, got new heads on it, just factory heads, but the springs are upgraded. And I got the... Uh, the roller rock, the can am roller rockers. Uh, upgraded the cam, headers, uh, chromoly uh, push rods. Um, I think I did everything. I think I changed everything besides the crank on here. The crank and the uh, coil packs. Those still the original coil packs. I wanted MSD. But when I looked at a lot of stuff about the MSD, a lot of people saying they have problems out of them. And when you generally see an engine build with five, 600 horsepower, they still use the, the factory coil packs. They're supposed to be that good. So I, I just left them on there. But like I said, everything has been changed besides the crank and the intake. But I am going to change the intake. I just haven't done it yet. I was researching, looking. I thought I wanted a fast intake, which I still would like a fast intake. But I just don't believe in paying a thousand dollars for a piece of plastic. I think that's just ridiculous. So I'm going to go with. I think it's a SS intake. It's like five hundred bucks or something like that. So when I take it around. I'm uh, back to the guy who, who built everything. I'm going to have that put in because he has to take the intake off because the oil pressure switch is bad. He think it was bad when he pressure washed and cleaned the block and it might mess it up. So he has to take that intake off. So once he do that, I just have the new intake and he can put it on. Um, so the intake is what is one thing I have left. I have dual exhaust, but it's not a true dual exhaust on here. So I'm going to take that off and get an X pipe 
and then I have to have the engine tuned because the cam that I bought said the engine had to be tuned and I'll pull the paperwork out let's see let's see what I bought because I don't build engines so I couldn't tell you all the stuff on it uh, that's it all right all right, a comp cam LS1 XR 269HR14. All these other numbers is like French to me because I don't know what the hell it means. But when I called Summit Racing and told them what I wanted or what I was looking at doing, they recommended that. I could went with a bigger cam, but he said I would lose a lot of low end torque. Cause I have a trailer that I still tow my four wheeler boat or whatever with, so I still want some torque, low end torque. And I'm not like I'm going racing, but I do want some good power. And uh, once everything is done, uh, with everything added, I should have 400. I should have at least 450 horsepower at the flywheel, is what I uh, researched. So let me go ahead and start it up. Since this engine was built, I might have put two, three hundred miles on it. Like I said, I don't drive too often. Either I'm in my work truck or I'm in my wife's car. And the other day, now I did have to replace the. Uh, the header collector gasket the thing burnt up i guess it was the cheap ones i mean i used to when i had a money carlo i used to have to do that with my money carlo a lot so i bought the metal ones so i don't have that problem you get all that irritating noise annoying noise that they do well, let's see yeah see why i bent up the back gotta get that fixed It's not the way I imagined it was gonna sound. I thought it'd be a little, a little more loping sound than that. Now, take it hasn't been tuned, so I don't know if it's not dumping enough gas. Cause I know it sucks in a lot more air than it did uh, stock. And you know, and it, but it's not dumping as much gas as it should be getting because it hasn't been tuned for that cam. It's still a stock computer tune, so the uh, the lift and stuff, the computer doesn't know it. I guess or however you want to say it so but that and he said once I get an X pipe and true dual exhaust with two mufflers it will get a lot louder and I want something that's pretty loud pretty annoying when I when I stump on the gas so you can hear me coming even though this is pretty loud for what I got on here now so let me start up again let it warm up a little bit take it for a quick ride up a little bit um go down the street and uh <clears throat> put a little speed on it. but one thing i do i have noticed before when i just had a stock engine i had a hypertech uh power programmer and it really didn't add much horsepower 
but what I did like about it was I had it it can you had it where you can change how your transmission performed. And you had a couple features to make the, the transmission a little snappier and you can change uh, your shift points where you can get it higher RPMs before it shift. Um, now the way it is now, factory, it actually sucks. And I guess I've been driving it with a Hypertech so long, it just feels totally different. But it, it seems to be lazy and it shifts about 5,000 RPMs. And that cam that I put in here, it says it gets this, you know, goes up to 6,300 RPMs. So it's gonna shift a good bit short before, you know, you get into it, I guess. I don't know how you want to call it. Um, I put in tow haul mode because that makes the transmission act a little bit better, but still not the way it was before. But when I take it up to get it tuned, um, I guess they'll correct all that stuff. Um, I live in Atlanta, so there's nowhere close that really tune. I have to pretty much drive 50 miles out the way to have it tuned. Um, there's nowhere really in the, in the local land area that I know of to have it tuned. But uh, I'm going to let this car go past me and we run some quick runs and see how it accelerates. Now, I think without a tune on it, it has, it still has more power with this cam and these headers stuff. It still has more power than when it had factory. Not a whole lot more. Um, but when it gets up to around 35, 3800 RPMs, that's when it really starts to pull with that cam in it. You can feel it move. And like I said, this is a stock tune, so I can only imagine how much better it will get when it's professionally tuned for it. So nobody's behind me, so let's go. And you see it's shifting mighty short. wasn't it was all right but it seemed like it pulled harder than that before with this tune i mean with this uh cam in it like i said maybe since the computer i don't know since the factory tune what the computer is thinking and it seems like sometimes it does change how it dries a little bit so i'm gonna go ahead and turn around and do it one more time turn around about right here And one other thing I've noticed, since the engine been built and have the headers and all this stuff on it, the engine tip seems to stay run a little bit cooler. So I don't know why is that, but you know I'm not going to complain. But it runs a, little, a good bit cooler. I said it moves pretty good. It's a 6,000 pound truck with an eight foot bed. So it actually moves pretty good. Um, like I said, with the tune, I'm, I'm figuring I'll get another extra 125 to 150 horsepower with all the add-ons I have and plus the intake and the pipe added. So at least 450 horsepower to fly with, I would think. And that's pretty much my take on the LS engine, having it built or whatever. And I can feel the difference, like I said, once you get to about 3,800 RPMs, I can feel it pulling a lot more at that point versus when it was stopped. Um, but I did lose bottom end torque. Um, but like I said, I don't know how much that would be added back once I have the tune added to it. So I should have all that done within about a month. So, and after I have that done, I'll put another video. So appreciate y'all uh, checking this out.